in a dead man's switch. Your plane hits the SeaTac tarmac with a jolt. Welcome to Seattle. The chilly northwest rain obscures your vision, vision <laughs> as you step out onto the tarmac. Before long, you're sitting in the cramped back seat of a cab, following the signal from Sam's locator chip, into the heart of the Redmond Barrens. Organ grinders. A legal chop shop for body parts, whether from the living or the dead. If you're hurting bad enough for new yen, this is the place to sell a limb or an organ. It's also a good place to dispose of an inconvenient body while making a little cash on the side. This franchise is the closest thing the Barons has to a morgue. It seems this is where Sam Watt's body has ended up. You open the door and are assaulted by the smell of death and bleach. I wanted to check out more of that room before I clicked on that, I suppose. The New Seattle Research Division. Sources say press conference tonight at 6 PST. I don't know what they're talking about there. I can't see anything else to clear on here. Employees only beyond this point. The smell of death and decomposition wash over you, only slightly masked by the minty, fake fresh of industrial grade antiseptic. here. Who is that, I wonder? I don't see anything else in here to click on, so I'll just talk to Dresden. Maybe we'll check out his files. Ah, hovering over the recently departed is a small dwarf, whistling a tune. His broad grin says, I love my job. A little more than you want or expect from someone in the chop shop trade. As you approach, he looks up with a lopsided grin. There's something kindly in his eyes, though it might just be a stray reflection of chrome and surgical tools. Sorry, didn't expect any visitors at this hour. And some asshole at corporate took my receptionist. What can I do for you, ma'am? Are you the coroner? I'm John Dresden, the organ grinder's branch manager here. So, yeah. That makes me this franchise's area coroner, too. And you are. Ah, Maya. I represent a man named Sam Watts, and I'm here to look into his murder. He frowns. Interesting. A dead man makes for a strange client. W what makes you think he's here? Sam had a locator chip embedded in his skull. I followed it here. I see. Well, you're right. He's here. Not too many people know about the murder yet, though. The press haven't caught wind of it yet. What with it being all the way out here in the Barrens. What's that noise? So who told you he was dead? Sam did. When his heart stopped. Uh, okay. I, I, okay. I'm not gonna tell him about the money. Sam's digital ghost. When his heart stopped, I got a sent a recorded message asking me to bring his killer to justice. Guess he had a hunch. The dwarf raises his eyebrows. A smile wiping the suspicion from his face. A dead man switch, eh? Fascinating. I was working on him earlier. He's over there. The second Emerald City Ripper victim. The third one was downtown. Emerald City Ripper? <sighs> Not my title. That's what the Seattle press insists on calling the killer. All they know is that, like the original Jack, our Ripper knows how to handle a scalpel. But this one's even more twisted. He or she always removes an internal organ from the victim. <sighs> Delicious. A trophy hunter. What was it? Watts's liver was cleanly cut out. Hmm. How about the other lucky contestants? The first victim's heart was missing, and the third had the spleen removed. Dresden, get out here. I'm here about the new Ripper Vic, Sam Watts. Uh, towering over the diminutive coroner is a homicide detective right out of central casting. If you ignore the tusks, pointed ears, and Neanderthal brow, you can smell his cheap aftershave from a mile away. 
So, this new Ripper Vic Watts. Name's familiar. Didn't his mother kill herself a while back? The coroner frowns. So you insisted at the time. <laughs> Come on, she offered. She offed herself. I had it on very good authority. Now let's go, Dresden. Give me something to work with here. This Ripper case is my ticket to a lieutenant's badge. I've already posted everything I know. Killer stuns the target with a combination of drugs and magic, then removes a single internal organ while they're still alive. The perpetrator is most likely right-handed, with a slim hand that knows its way around a scalpel. Has a decent understanding of human and metahuman anatomy, too. So, I'm looking out for a whacked-out surgeon. Not necessarily. I don't know any surgeons who still use scalpels anymore. These days it's all done with computer-controlled lasers. Could be anyone from a military field surgeon to an antique medicine aficionado. You're no damn help, dwarf. The Lone Star detective finally notices you. You note his superhuman powers of observation. Who the hell are you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Strength four. None of your business, Lumpy. No, I'm not gonna say that. Are you the detective on this case? I was hired by him. The dreck you were. You get anywhere near my investigation, and it'll be you on the slab, human. Mm. He looks back at the dwarf. Dresden, get me more. I'm putting someone in a cell or, or a box this week, and I'm claiming my promotion. He's a grumpy old guy. Isn't he? Dresden looks amused. Do you always make friends that easily? I, I'm great at dinner parties, too. He cocks his head to one side. Be straight with me. You're really going to work for the dead man? Mm. I'm going to bring his killer to justice. At least street justice. Fascinating again. Detective McCluskey isn't entering anything but Detective McCluskey. He can pick his own mother if it meant another 10 new yen a week in his paycheck. Plus, he's on the take. Dresden pauses, considering... You have honor, after a fashion. I'm trying to honor the dead in my work, so we have that in common. What can I do to help you? Hmm. Ah. Just need to know one more thing. Where was Sam killed? Karma gain, too. Dresden looks up at you intently for a moment before speaking. You know, I might be able to do you one better. Why don't you poke around those body lockers in the back and see if you find anything useful? Uh, do you know where the murder site is or not? Dresden says nothing. A sly smile plays across his face as he turns back to his work, whistling a tune. Uh, that's weird. Okay, I'll check it out though. Probably just attack me or something. The cold storage drawer is labeled John Doe, but the internal thermostat is set to 21 degrees Celsius. Uh, hmm. Hmm. So it's probably not a John Doe inside? The storage drawer opens to reveal the fully clothed body of a man, arms folded across his chest. In addition to sporting some of the brightest orange hair you've ever seen, the body seems to be in very good condition. Whoa, easy there. Oh, it's he's alive, okay. In one quick move, he jumps down from the drawer and stands before you. For someone who just woke up in a morgue locker, he seems unfazed and pretty well put together. He spotted Data Jack drilled into his temples and some shamanistic tattoos peeking above his collar. An interesting combination. <laughs> I told John to wake me up at 6 in the morning. Is it 6 yet? It doesn't feel like 6 yet. Sorry, didn't expect you to be so alive. Yeah, Dresden thinks he's pretty funny. You're not the first person he's pulled this one on. Well, so much for a good night's sleep. On the plus side, I know she haven't killed me yet, so that's good. If you aren't after me, then what's your story? Oh, I was, I'm looking into the death of Sam Watts. The coroner seems to think you can help me out. Sam, eh? 
Glad somebody cares. We used to drink together every now and then over at the Union. Decent enough guy. Always in trouble over something or other, though. Jake yells towards the other side of the room. John, is this lady cool? Yeah, she's on the level, working for Sam. I believe it or not, some sort of dead man switch. I thought you could help her out. Maybe even stop moping about the shop all day. Huh. Thanks for volunteering me, he pauses. Might be sizing you up, but it's hard to tell behind the shades. All right, then. The name's Jake, and you are... Nice to meet you, Jake. I'm Maya. Let's see here. And well-mannered, too. Such a rare thing in this city. Well, it sounds John, like you might be taking a dive into the deep end here. John's right. I might be able to help you out. I was with Sam the other night. The night of the murder. Poor guy. He was hanging at the seamstress's union that night, tripped out and rowdy. I'd been laying low there for a few days after a bad run. Miss Kubota asked me to throw Sam out, so I did. But out in the alley, some gangers got the jump on me. Damn, maybe I need some soy calf after all, John. Did you grab me a cup? Get your own damn cup. My hands are dirty anyway. Now what's wrong with this intestine? You hear a loud squelching sound as Dresden continues his work. Thanks, John. You're a real pal. Anyway, there's a big fat court bounty on my head. Like I said, my last job didn't go exactly according to plan. Out in the alley, a few Halloweeners got the jump on us. Damn gangers thought they could turn a quick profit off my head. Jake smiles, and you get the impression that it didn't work so well out for the gangers. Sam stunned a loft during the fight, though, and that's the last I saw of him, until he turned up here, dead on arrival. Reminds me of my last day in this place. Hmm. Do you know anything else? I know they found his body a block away from the Union, just lying there in broad daylight. That's the Baron's for you. Jake looks down at his expression. Masked by chrome and crimson glass. Shame, though. Wish I'd been there if those slagging gangers hadn't come along. Tell you what, you look like you can handle yourself in a fight. I could use some backup to settle the score with those Halloweeners out there. Their leader's got the whole gang searching the barons for me. I need to get rid of that asshole. And sh Ugh. In return, I'll take you to the place Sam was murdered. It's not safe to hit these streets alone at night, trust me. Jake eyes you up and down, and maybe I'll throw in some decent supplies while we're at it. What do you say? Hmm. It's nice to have someone watching your back out there, assuming you can trust them. I get it. Gotta be careful in this trade. I'm not one to go back on a deal, though. John can vouch for that. Plus, you know where I'm hiding out, right? Doesn't leave me a lot of room to sell you out. What do you say? I do like a bit of street justice every now and then. Great. I've been hiding out here ever since that run-in with those Halloweeners. Whiny bunch of gangers. But this stretch of the Barrens is their turf. Hell, I'm surprised you even made it this more in one piece without packing some heat. He yells, Dresden yells over his shoulder. Very funny, Jake. You can sleep in the dumpster tomorrow. So you need a weapon? Ready for an evening out on the town? You're buying. <laughs> hey, I've already provided the party favors. Alright, we can leave whenever you're ready. Alright, so. That was interesting. Can we. Something here. Basic med kit. Yeah. Basic trauma kit. Basic med kit. Okay, those are probably gonna come in handy. Alright, come on. Hmm. If you can select dialogue options during conversations using the 1 through 9 keys. The Redmond Barons. 
run in the Seattle sprawl, and sooner or later you'll find yourself in the Redmond Barrens. It doesn't matter your business, the Barrens doesn't like you. <laughs> Take one part radioactive wasteland, three parts dog-eat-dog -dog slum, add a dash of tourist trap, and you've got a recipe for mean as hell. You leave the sanitized death and formaldehyde of organ grinders behind, entering the anarchy and desperation of the streets. Jake stops a minute to breathe deeply, filling his lungs with motorcycle exhaust, radioactive dust, cordite, and who knows what else. He, exhale, he exhales with an expression of wry contentment. The stench and grime tell him he's home. Hmm, the game auto saves there. Yeah. Ah, hmm. Ellie. Ellie? Oh, wow. something else here.